I wanted to make a short video on power supplies. It may seem a rather simple and mundane topic to, to many, but what you see in front of you are a kind of an evolution of power supplies that I've had over the years. Back here is an Alenco kit that I built uh, many, many years ago, I think more than 30 years ago. Uh, and I'll talk a little more about that in a minute. To the right over here is a power supply that I bought, which actually works pretty well. Uh, I also have uh, uh, another one by this same manufacturer, but nonetheless, this is a, a fairly nice power supply. And then to the right of it is a power supply that also has a USB output. And then back here is a is a duplicate of that one, so I could uh, get both. Uh, I could get basically split, or I could put them in uh, series and double the power output or the voltage output. Behind is an isolation transformer that also has an auto transformer built into it, so that you can adjust the AC voltage. And finally to the left over here is a signet, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But before we get to any of these particular power supplies, I thought I would mention one thing that I often forget, and I hope that, uh, that you'll remember it. So let me show you that. One of the best power supplies for an experimenter is a battery. It's certainly a lot cheaper than any of these power supplies. It's relatively stable as long as the battery lasts. If you make up a series of cables like you see here that allow you to make connections in various ways, you can produce uh, not only a single supply but a, a split supply or, or you can stack these up in in series and get a variety of voltages. It's also very safe to use a battery. It's pretty hard to to hurt yourself with a 9 volt transistor battery, although if you're one of these people who love to take challenges, stick one of these on your tongue sometime. And uh, I don't recommend it, but uh, but if you're if you insist on uh, on proving that uh, a transistor battery is not completely harmless. Try that. Uh, so let's move on to this power supply, this Alenco. It's a positive-negative uh, power supply that provides up to 15 volts positive and 15 volts negative, and it also has an output for 5 volts uh, for logic fairly high current. Uh, I think it's 3 amps on the uh, uh, 5 volt supply. It's a very nice supply, but a couple of things that it does not provide is very accurate voltage measurement and it does not allow you to read the current. So you'll notice that there is a, a little box here that is contains a couple of voltmeters, 0 to 15 volts, and a couple of little cheap multimeters. I think I paid five dollars a piece for these in, a, uh, in bulk. I think I bought five or six of them at a time. And one of the reasons is it's sometimes nice to have a meter connected to your circuit that it doesn't have to be an accurate meter. It just gives you an idea of where the voltage levels are. In this case, what I have done is I have wired a uh, phono jack in series with the output. So, for example, this positive output is in series with this phono jack, and then this switch is across the jack so that you can either uh, short the jack, in which case the current goes straight to here, or you can open the switch, in which case the current flows out and through this meter and back. That allows you to monitor the current. However, one of the downsides to this particular 
uh, setup is it does not provide any real current limiting. So if something happens and you touch a, uh, some area or short a couple of leads together or whatever, and the, all of a sudden you draw a huge amount of current, this setup and this power supply don't really protect you from that. So that is what uh, the next thing I want to talk about is on supplies like this, one of the things you want to consider is whether you can monitor the voltage and the current, but also whether you can set the voltage and the current, where the, the supply automatically limits the current and the voltage to whatever you have set. That can be of, of big value, particularly when you're experimenting. If you've ever, if you've ever crossed a couple of leads on a, on a breadboard, you know what I'm talking about. It's really nice to know that the supply is back there protecting you a little bit. Uh, one thing that can be useful is uh, a, a USB output, of just a 5 volt USB output in addition to the regular power supply. And that's one of the neat features of this supply. But the uh, I'm going to show you the signalant here in a minute. But one of the things that uh, one of the reasons that I do, did not continue to use this supply is it's a little bit noisy. And so let's talk briefly about that. Some of the things you want to pay attention to with a power supply is the regulation. That is, as the load varies, does the supply uh, compensate for a varying load? So if you set 10 volts on the display, and uh, and you're drawing uh, 500 milliamps, and then you increase the load to uh, to an amp. Does it stay 10 volts? And the second thing is how much ripple there is on the output. All of these run off AC line, and therefore they they have 60 or 120 hertz ripple. And you want the ripple. You, you'd like it to be zero which, by the way, is one of the nice things about those batteries. There's no ripple on a battery. Uh, though there's not a lot of real good regulation either, and certainly no overcurrent protection. So those are some things you need to look out for. Noise, regulation, uh, current limiting, and, uh, and ripple, or uh, uh, I guess what I would say is AC on the DC supply. So now let's take a quick look at this signalant supply and in, the, in going there I'm going to just briefly mention it's a good idea to have an auto transformer with a variable uh, with variable voltage particularly if you like to bring equipment up slowly and you want something where you can monitor the voltage or the current that it's drawing and that's uh, what that uh, Syncor uh, unit does. So now let's take a look at the uh, at the signalant and then I'll kind of close this out. I bought this supply a few years ago and the reason is that in various ways this supply provided uh, things that the none of the other supplies provided. It has very low noise, and I'm not trying to do a, a sales job on Siglant. I don't sell anything for anybody, but this particular supply turned out to be a very nice supply. It has a 5 volt output, uh, a channel 3, so if I go with logic, and I can also uh, put a regulator on this and use it at 3.3 volts, and then it also has two supplies that are completely separate. So they don't necessarily share a common as that Elenco did. And therefore I can supply separate circuits off of this with the ground in the middle if you need uh, ground protection. It provides voltage and current uh, control. Let me turn it on and you can see a little of that. So voltage and current, and the current you can set to a, a limit. 
it tells you how much the current is, but when you have the supplies turned off, it tells you what the current limit is set to. I suggest that if you're going to be doing much experimenting, that you start with a supply a little bit like this one. At least dual supplies, the, each of these will go up to 30 volts, so I can uh, do a total of 60 volts. Now if you're doing tube equipment, you'll probably want a higher voltage supply. But for most solid state equipment, uh, solid state experiments, this is perfectly adequate with 30, it actually goes a little above 30, maybe 32 or 34 volts. Uh, it has plenty of current, and if you want to do TTL logic, you can use the 5 volt supply. So those are the power supplies that have sort of evolved over the years in, in my little uh, modest lab here. Now, of course, there are much more expensive uh, power supplies that supply hundreds of volts or hundreds of amps and, and so on. But for the average experimenter, ham radio operator, or whatever uh, maker, whatever your, your flavor of electronics is, I think you'll find that if you start out with a supply like this, it will last you for a very, very long time. I wish these had been available 30 years ago or so when I built that Alenco, but they weren't, at least not at anywhere near the, the price of this one. But today, they're not hard to come by. So that's my take on power supplies. I hope you've been entertained or informed, or maybe hopefully both. But uh, stay tuned, we'll move on to some other subjects. And please, if you have any questions, uh, a viewer sent in a question about dielectric absorption, which I'm planning to do a video on. Uh, but anyway, if you have questions or comments, please uh, post them. I try to read every comment. I don't respond to every comment, but I try to read them. And uh, viewers often bring up issues or questions or add additional material to these videos, and I think that's quite helpful. It certainly helps me. I hope it helps you. So stay safe and have a nice day.